I'm Ian Medjugorje and I'm this, what's your name? Caroline Fry. Where are you from, Caroline? I'm originally from Church Point, Louisiana, but uh, I moved to Morganza in 2020. And uh, why did you come to Medjugorje? <clears throat> so, we were supposed to come to Medjugorje next year. It, they had the trip planned for the Holy Land. Well, that got changed two months before the trip. And I told him, because my mother-in-law is with me here, and I told her, I was like, I want to go next year because I want to go to Medjugorje. I had read the, the book and um, they switched it. I was like, okay, <laughs> I guess I'm going now. Mm -hmm. So um, just to find, find peace and dive deeper into my faith and to just be. Beautiful. And you, what did you find, you know, at the end uh. of the journey? <laughs> we leave tomorrow. No? Yes, we leave tomorrow. Um, Father, Father David is leading it, and um, he told us before. I mean, I had expectations, but he, he was like, it was two weeks before we came on the trip, and he said, don't have any expectations, none. Like, just go with an open mind, open heart, and that's what I did. So I was like, okay, forget whatever I was thinking, anything that I was, whatever, and we came, and <laughs> you were touched. I see oh, something no. happened. <laughs> it uh, well, the first day. We went to, I think it was the first day, or maybe it was the second. But with the first day we went to Operation Hill, before I was like, okay, can I have, I went to confession before we started walking up or while we were walking up. So I got to do that first, just lay it all down, get, get it all out. And we went up, that was probably the most peaceful, amazing experience, just being up there in, just seeing her there and just, knowing that she is there it was just it's very touching so after that we we went back and or we had mass first then we went there and I'm very strong in my faith and I, I guess you could say I'm bold <laughs> I'm 27 and uh, I mean living it out you know just to be an example to show that it is real um, and so, probably about a month before the trip, I wore a veil in adoration, and when I went, like I just, my heart was beating fast. Like I could just feel, you, I felt his presence, presence there. And I didn't do it after that. I just kind of let it go. And then I brought, I brought the veil here the first day for mass. I didn't, I didn't wear it, and. I bawled after adoration, after communion. Um, so the next day, I was like, I have to, I have to wear the veil. We were drinking a bottle of wine outside and mm -hmm. talking with a friend, and I was like, I have to wear it. So I wore it, and of course, I get asked to read. read. So I had to go up wearing the veil the first time I ever wore it in mass. That was said in front of however many people because it was live. Um, and so after that, Father David came up to me after Mass and was like, I, have suppo I had a, a prayer that, I, and that it just spoke to me that I was supposed to tell you to wear the veil in Mass. And he said, I walked up to read, he saw me, and he was like, it was like, whoa, <laughs> you wore it. Um, so he told me that, and then... We were going to another place to visit, and um, a lady came up to me, and she was just saying how beautiful it, was, beautiful it was to see you wear the veil. And and we're struggling with infertility right now, and so it just, you know, the I mean, it's a human desire to have a child, and and all of that. So it. She came up and she said it was so beautiful to see you wear the veil and. She talked about how on the altar, the chalice is covered with a veil mm -hmm. because it brings life. And so she said, it, you bring life because you wear, you're wearing a veil. <laughs> and 
I just couldn't help. Father Day was next to me and I just started crying. <laughs> he just wrapped me in his arms and that was truly powerful for me. Cause it just, you felt, I felt like I know. And like coming here too, like before anything, I mean, that's been my prayer for however long. And I just wanted to come with, I had expectations and then it changed. and. I just wanted to come with thankfulness for where I am, who I am, and to be on this journey with all these other people that, you know, are so in love with the same thing, the same one. And it just, it really just opened my eyes. So I came, I wanted to come with complete just thankfulness for whatever he has planned for me. Um, and that just, confirmed that Mary has interceded for me and that Jesus has heard my prayer because I was like I can't I feel guilty for continuing to pray for the same thing because because I have such a strong desire for it like that's all I want in my heart is to bring life to the world and just to pour my heart into someone else to be able to spread it to other people and Knowing that they heard it, like that confirmed it for me. That my prayer was heard and I don't need to, I don't need to continue to ask for it because it's heard. Like I know however it will happen, whenever it will happen, will be when it's supposed to happen. And I mean, (laughs) it's just a beautiful thing. And I want to be bold in my faith. Like I want to be, I want to be different. I want to be an example for somebody else, and I want people to see him through me. I know you, you're a young woman. I come from Germany. I live in different countries, Czech Republic, Spain, and there are no young people in the church. Do you have friends who think you're an extraterrestrial? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, they're all Catholic. Oh, no. Well, some of them are Catholic, some aren't, and I hope the ones that aren't, I hope that they believe, they have faith. I just, I hope that they believe in the Eucharist and believe in just him and his sacrifice that he made for us. And it's a learning journey. I mean, I'm learning every day. There's so much that I do not know, so much. I just, I know my faith and I know what I believe. And I hope and I have, I just, I just, I don't know, I just believe. I mean, it just, and it's hard to explain until you experience things like this or just things in your life that he gives you when you need them. And you don't know until you need it. Like it just, until he breaks you down, he he's gonna build you up, but you have to be, what is it with the, um, like the new wine skin. Mm-hmm. I can't think of what the, the phrase is or the, the Bible verse put, is. Pour old wine into into an, old uh, skin, Yes, huh? you have to be a new wine skin. Mm-hmm. It just, and true. it's true, you have to be, there's, there's suffering mm-hmm. all over the world, but, and you know, it, it's not from God, but he uses that to mold us into who we're supposed to be. Like it, he has to, because then we wouldn't see. We wouldn't be able to see it. But, you know, I have the experience that a lot of people, they don't even, you know, they didn't receive the education. So your parents are like Father Catholics yes. and explained it to you in a, in a gentle, beautiful, They did and didn't. Way. Like we still, I mean, we were very traditional. I mean, going to Mass and, but like I said, sometimes it was more of just like a routine and a thing that you did, you know? I mean, and, and I mean, I'm s- we're all still learning like <laughs> my parents are still learning we're still learning like it's there's so much I mean the catechism the bible everything like it's just we're all we're all on a different journey but we're all trying to get to the same destination and I think that's where it can be so important that we go through it together because sometimes I feel like, oh, well, you're going through something different, so we can't, we can't relate or we can't whatever, but like, it should be all the same. Like, we should all be trying to help one another get there because 
if you know where you want to go and where we should be going, then we should want that for every other person. But we have to, like, we have to focus on ourselves first. That's where I struggle sometimes. I want other people to experience what I'm, I'm experiencing, but they might not be there. So I have to focus on myself and then they will see from that because that's what I'm in control of. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you pray with your parents together? I mean, yes. We used to have, we, uh, we used to say the rosary and there was a video that we would watch. I remember it so vividly because we were all in their room like on the, on the bed or on the bottom of the bed and we'd watch the video and they would sing the rosary and it was a bunch of kids and a lady and it was, oh, it was so pretty. The was video the was awesome. No, it was the, the no, it was the rosary. But I don't remember what it was called or who it was, but I remember that. Like we, we said the rosary and um, I mean, they said it, we watched it and we probably fell asleep most of the sometimes. <laughs> Me but, too, still not. But, uh, and I remember mom was always like, come on, we're saying the rosary. We're like, really? Come on, mom. And she was like, no, we're saying it, come on. Uh -huh. So uh, we did, we said the rosary as a family. Um, but did you have a personal encounter in your life? Something happened that you experienced the living God? No, I mean, I, I don't want to say that. I feel like recently, more recently I have because mm -hmm. of just, I'm older, mm -hmm. say older. I mean, I'm getting, you know, mm -hmm. as I'm getting older, I'm starting to just understand and see and really focus and I guess meditate. Like I never really would meditate. Mm -hmm. I would just kind of be, you know, like be there, but not fully there. Yeah. And, uh, so I can't say growing up, like it was just, it was a thing you did and you, you know, it's, yep, this is, you know, it's, our it's faith. just it, it, what it was and it was our faith and it just, it was going by that. So I, like I said, I had faith, like that never really went anywhere, went to, Catholic, blessed, thankful for my parents to send us to a Catholic school and, you know, we had the opportunity to go to adoration, to attend mass once a week mm -hmm. at school and then at home on, sun, you know, on Sundays mm -hmm. on the weekends and um, I mean, friends that we would go to adoration and like we would pray the rosary or I remember one time me and one of my friends had went to the beach and something had happened on the, we were on our way back and she was having like just weird chest pains like and she was driving so I drove and we said the rosary on repeat the entire way back from the beach. Like it was like five hours. Like we just, you know, just naturally. Yeah, it just, we were like, we're saying the rosary <laughs> and that's what, was, you know, like we were probably 20. And what, 20, what is for, for the beauty for you of the rosary prayer now? The what? What is the beauty of the rosary prayer for you now? I feel like, and I feel like this trip too, like, not that I wouldn't call upon Mary, but like, I would kind of go straight to Jesus. And I feel like I, I needed, I needed to go to Mary more. Mm -hmm. Just to have a relationship with our mother to go to her to follow her example mm -hmm. and i haven't like i'm just realizing that within this last year mm -hmm. to call upon her mm -hmm. and i feel like that's a beautiful a beautiful thing for a for a you know for a woman to go to her like she is the example for us i mean jesus is too obviously yes but as a as a woman and a lady like mary should be our example to give, to bring life, to to provide, you know, just the 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 grace and the simplicity of that. And I feel like in the world right now it's hard to to find that because of what they're taking from women. But like that's the beauty in it in a in a woman. The simplicity and the giving and and I don't want to get away from that. For for my kids, you know, and for just for younger younger ladies and women to see that I feel like it's important to not get away from her her role that that she has for every woman it's a role model for us no for yeah our Protestant yes friends, it's a role model for yes us. yes well, to look up to yeah and the confession for you what is what would you tell young people what is so beautiful about confession leaving it letting it all go know that you when you let go and give it up that is forgiven <laughs> no matter how far how bad how bad you think it is like 
in the instant of the priest <laughs> blessing you, I'll say the priest, Jesus blessing you, it's completely forgiven. It was then and it is now and it is in the future. I am who I am, always the same. And no matter when you, no matter what sin it is, like if I do it tomorrow, it's already forgiven. But you have to be able to be aware mm -hmm. to say you want that forgiveness and ask for it. Because he's not going to give it to you unless you don't want it. Mm -hmm. Like he doesn't force us into anything. Which I think helps us so much because we're, it's not effective. I don't know. It's not, it doesn't work if we don't realize it. Because then it's just a thing. And it's not just a thing. Like we need to know what we're doing is wrong to be forgiven. If I may ask, how did, how did you gain all that knowledge? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just. Are you interested to read the Bible, what Our Lady says? I'm, you read the I'm, Bible you as, uh, I'm actually, Father David asked me to read a Bible study this year. Yeah. So it's kind of helping me because I didn't really, I have a, one of my second grade teachers, we, uh, we had all bought Bibles and we probably read oh, Genesis and Exodus and then we kind of stopped because it was like, it was just, it was so a lot and then, well, and then trying to get together and read it together and, mm -hmm. you know, make all of these marks and stay on the same page and um, I'm, I wasn't the best in school. <laughs> like I was not and it just, it's hard for me to, I'm a hands-on person and so that's a big book. <laughs> so it was it was hard. It's hard for me to sit down and read and get like I mean there's some people that take one verse and get can talk about it for an hour. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. I just I can't. So over time I feel like I'm getting better and better but or learning more and more but uh, I, I have not read the, the whole Bible <laughs> yet. I, I want to. I want to. I, I listen. Trying to listen to the Bible in a year to get that to get it finished, and I, I haven't listened to it while I'm here because I've been praying so much. But. Um, but you love to pray. Yes. You, you feel as well that that you get you get answer, you get a connection to Christ through mm -hmm. prayer. That's like a personal conversation. How yes. Would you describe prayer? Yes. Um, just a conversation mm -hmm. that me talking a lot. A lot of times I'm like, okay, sh I have to stop <laughs> talking because I can talk. I talk a lot, but um, I'm trying to be like still. Just be, just be still and be there, like. I don't know who said this, but like we're human beings, we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to do. We're not supposed to fix. Like we're we're supposed to be, and I struggle with that because I want to help. I want to I want to be there for people. You know, just to do what I can to help. But we're not supposed to. We're supposed to pray. We're supposed to. That's what that's what Mary acts. That's what Jesus acts of us. Like, so it's difficult, but. So you do it, like in the car or at home? In the, in the car, you yes. I try. I'm, I'm not the best at it because I can't. <laughs> Sometimes I'm late, but I, uh, there are mornings where I, I like to sit and I'm trying to get better at waking up earlier to have that 30 minutes or whatever it may be to sit. And but you know, I think the secret is just from the heart what you do. Yes, and just, just but just but to live heart. it to live it out, like live not out, just yeah. not just have. You know, like a routine. I'm gonna pray the rosary every day. Like to really feel what you're doing, and then to live it out in having a conversation. You know, talking, pa smiling with someone passing by. Like that's that's a prayer too. And I think we're so far in this. You know, like it's like a structured prayer. Like that's what we think prayer is, and it's not. It's it should be our entire lives. Like it should be every day in everything that we do. And then you gain the knowledge because you will get the inspiration. Yes. The Holy Spirit will talk. Because He gives you what you need when you need it. Do you have a spirit director? I don't. I kind of, I don't know. I kind of just. Yeah, you got a director. Yeah, I got a director. <laughs> got a director. Okay, nice. I, I, see I mean, director. I have a lot of friends, which a lot of times I think it's more of just meditating, thinking. I probably think too much too, mm. but. I mean, I, Father David, I guess, but I don't know. I don't. I don't really. 
I mean, friends and just. You trust it? Just, yeah. Just you know? trust and if I need to go sit and cry or whatever I need yes. to do, like that's, that's a learning patient. I don't know. It just. You see yourself as well that, that you get more peaceful when you, when you pray, Thy will be done in my life. Yes. I, that's a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. I will be done. That's a good song. Is it for you? There this was uh, to let go, like to to give up whatever. Like I mean, surrender. Like just to like let it. His will be done because it's gonna happen anyway. But it won't happen in His grace unless we surrender to it. Because if not, it's just it's just it's not it's not right. You're not allowing it to happen. You're just you're fighting it. They said it in mass today. Like mm -hmm. sometimes we reject reject His grace. I'm like, whoa! I don't want to do that. I don't want to reject <laughs> His <laughs> grace, please. Yeah, that's that's the struggle we all have. Yes. Right? We want to do it our way. Yes. And then to open up completely. And then you try to convince yourself that it's His will when it's really not. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what would you tell people who are married? You found your partner. Here in Mexico, a lot of people look. To find their vocation, their mm -hmm. partner. What would you tell them out of your experience? How do you find the right partner? Patience. Patience again. Just trust. Let go. Like he will, he will provide, no matter what. No matter what. And it will be when you least <laughs> expect it. Because <laughs> I was so not. I was like, I'm done. <laughs> no more. <laughs> like I'm done. Uh -huh. But pray about it. Like he, he will answer your prayers. He knows and he hears and he will answer. But he will he will provide. And you'll know. You, it won't be. My mom always always she's like, it's not going to be this sign. He's the one. I was like, I know, but I'm going to know. And you'll know. You know it in the heart. You will know. You will know it. I, I believe this now. Too. You will definitely but know. But you never were taught that God the Father is an angry old man with a white beard and waiting to touch us and put us to hell? No. No, he's so merciful. <laughs> <laughs> so t tell a bit about him. I don't know. I would have to say he is an old man, but like just a gentle. I love. I love old people. <laughs> they are uh, just gentle and like so caring, but but then he'll give you that look. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, you know. That's the wrong horse. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, but just he. Funny. Sarcasm, I feel like. Yeah. Just a funny, gentle, peaceful little, little old man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yes. Uh -huh. A beautiful and thing. Yeah. And your favorite spot in Magic Place or I'm gonna say Cross Mountain. Cross Mountain. Well, I I top, was top, top well, I loved it. I was I was the first one to the top, the last one on the top, and the first one to the bottom <laughs> of our whole group. They uh they were making fun of me because I was in the back because I I wanted to stay. I was I said divine mercy on the top for all the intentions I have with me and. Uh, so I was the last one. I was like, I'm going to finish this before we go down. Because they were like, come on. I was like, y'all go. I'll catch up. <laughs> so, uh, but that was, the wind was so strong. It was blowing so hard. It was cold, but I was kneeling and I was like, whoa. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was perfect. I loved it. And uh, I started going down while I started passing them up. I found a, another trail on the side. So I started going and. Yeah. They were like, watch out, Caroline's knocking people down with her stick. <laughs> I was like, I am not. And they were just, they, they've been calling me the 10-year-old. And they were like, watch out, she's coming through. <laughs> but that was, that was fun. And then we were, there's somebody here with us and we, uh, <laughs> we were, yeah. I was, I was like probably third, third on the way bottom uh -huh. <laughs> to the, to the bottom. And I was like, I passed him up, and I was like, you didn't think I'd let you beat me, did you? Beat me, did you? <laughs> passed him up, darted to the ground. <laughs> Made it to the bottom first, too. And then down, you ran to the here I am. Yep, I jumped, I jumped, and I was pain. there. <laughs> and I was like, come on, where y'all been? <laughs> so you, that you was see, yeah? yeah? I think that's also for, for the people who want yes. counseling people are joyful people. Yes, are happy. we are joyful. Even if they're much older than yep. you, you know? It's, it's yep. It's a constant 
a constant joy with you. You know, happy happy is, doesn't last for a long time, but joy does. Joy is always your. You always have joy if you have Jesus. If you have Jesus, if you trust. But somebody might maybe now listening saying, "Why well, are you are joyful? You have that. How can? Why is Jesus joyful? Why is this happening to you?" I mean, what do you, they have to do? Have to have a relationship like you? Uh, they have to just let go, dive into it, be open, be open, and just. He'll show you. He will show you. Wow. And you will feel it. Mm-hmm. And what would what you tell people why come to Medjugorje after your trip now here? After, after being here like seven days kind of? They, before we came, they told us that the trip, the pilgrimage started before we came. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it did. And then now we're here. And I feel like it started here, but then they also said it will start when you get home. And I think that's just all true because our whole life is a pilgrimage. <laughs> it really is. And it's how you go about it and how you, how you approach it, how you accept it. I think how you accept it is really important. Because if you're not willing to be open, you can't receive it. So. I've received grace, and we're at the hotel grace. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's just like, grace, <laughs> it just, it's, it's, it's something to, I mean, it, it just, you can't, you can't explain it. You, everybody has their own experience of, experience of it, and they have to experience for themselves, but they have to be willing to experience it. They have to be open to it. What can I say? Thank you for that beautiful interview. <laughs> oh, thank you. I 